and I was really fascinated by this, and this is the question I'm asking you this morning about should we have a dedicated minister for men? Well, the reason I ask that question is because Nick Fletcher, who's a Tory MP, said yesterday uh, that yesterday that uh, men are being failed by society and need a minister dedicated to championing their causes. He went on to say that actually the role would deal with specific health problems that men face and try to improve their life chances. He then went on further to say that actually the minister mirroring the existing cabinet role for women would campaign for more male primary school teachers to provide role model models for boys who do not have a father at home and other priorities could include encouraging boys to pursue careers such as nursing, improving paternity leave and also tackling the influence of misogynists on social media such as Andrew Tate. Well joining us now is Kenny Mamarella de Cruz who is a men's issue commentator. Good morning to you. Good morning, thanks Good for morning. having me on. No, absolute pleasure. I think this is a fascinating story. What are your thoughts on this? Um, we're in trouble. Men are in trouble. And um, I, personally, I'm in a bit of shock and a bit of pain because someone I know last week who is a banker took his own life. The week before, a, a guy who's been coming to men's groups, I've been holding men's groups for 23 years, has been coming for about 20 years, was found dead in his home alone. Um, we are in serious trouble because men do need role models. Um, we need to learn how to take care of ourselves, but I would say also we need to be heard so we can speak. So many men go into their heads. Sadly, younger men go on computers and they listen to what YouTube and Andrew Tate and God knows porn and everything else tells mm. them because they don't have other men to turn to, to find, to learn from other people's experiences of how to do it right and how other people have done it wrong. Um, it's the suicide rates, the loneliness of men is shocking. Good men wanting to be good men and good fathers and, and contribute to society, not really given a chance because so many men kind of find like it's a minefield. As soon as they open their mouths, they might say something wrong. Mm. Meanwhile, are there people around to listen and tell them how to get things right and how to navigate this minefield? But yeah, we're in trouble. And that doesn't mean that we're bad. It means that we want to take part mm. and we need the, the same that women have. There's a, a minister for women. We need support so we can be good, uh, contribute to society. And tell me, where, where do you think, in your opinion, where did it go wrong? That's a very, very tough question. I mean, we c I could say, for example, um, after the war, men couldn't talk because there were so many horrific situations that men had been through that it was withdraw, suppress and take part. I could say that it's it's the, the way that people have become money hungry. So I'll go out and earn money and to an extent abandon the family because maybe my family didn't show me how to be a family or, man. Or so maybe I'll they earn have the money. to work. Maybe they need the money. Absolutely. Absolutely. But then I wonder how many people are better earning money than being in the family. Um, and if men weren't brought up in safe, sound families, then maybe they don't know how to be or to create a safe, sound family. I totally hear you with we've needed to earn. Mm. But one place that I find a lot of men kind of pinball between is I should be at home with my family because that's where I want to be, but I need to earn or I need to earn so I can provide for my family. And very often I find with men, whatever it is, you know, whatever it is we do, someone will find fault. I'm doing this wrong for my family, for my bank account. I'm being politically incorrect. I'm being insensitive. You know, these are the things that men need to be able to explore and gain inspiration from other men. Yeah, let me bring in Dr. Rene here. We talked about toxic masculinity yeah. here. Just just your thoughts on, on, on what Kenny has said and where it went wrong, the lack of role models, something you and I have spoken about a great deal. 
Kenny, I just found what you said really interesting because I wonder if we've actually even moved on for that now. Men used to have the role of looking after their family. That was their role in life. Women stayed at home, looked after children in the main. Men went to work. We then had obviously the feminism drive and obviously I always describe myself as a feminist where women work as well. Sometimes women earn more than men but quite often still the other way around. And I wonder if men have lost their purpose in life in terms of that role where women are now being portrayed as absolutely able to do anything on their own without a man and that men don't need a role but they do need a role just as women need mm. a role and I think many of my friends when I speak to them would rather not go back to work at nine months after they've had their babies they would love for the man in their life to be the provider if there is one and to actually stay at home for three four five years with their child and I just wonder if we actually need to stop toxifying men as the provider to the family and give them back their role I couldn't agree more. Purpose and a lack of purpose can cripple a man. And I would say, this might be a little bit controversial, I'd say another thing that cripples the hardiest of men is what I'd call toxic femininity. Yeah. And that's when a man is criticised mm. or withdrawn from or humiliated. Mm -hmm. And I would say toxic femininity and toxic masculinity can come from both men and women and everything in between. Mm. It's a way of being aggressive or passive aggressive. A lot of men, me included, because I'm a traditional kind of bloke, um, I like to provide and protect. And I feel very lucky because I do have a purpose mm. and I do have passion. So many men don't. Where do I put myself? And sadly, in the men's groups that I hold, the two biggest questions that men come in with is how do I do me right? and what's mm. wrong with me. It's they an, just want to know. It's an interesting point, isn't it? So I view myself as a very capable, I can always look after myself, I'm a working woman, I'm a doctor, I'm a mother. But at the same time, I always have in the back of my head, and I feel very lucky to have that, that I know my partner is there mm. to protect us. And I know if I have yeah. a problem right now, I can just go to him and he will help me sort mm. it out. And I'm not ashamed of that. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I would also say that men need men for some things. Yes. Men need men. So here's another mm. slightly controversial situation. I mean, since lockdown, I've been holding men's groups every day online. One of the hugest, hugest things that I came across during lockdown that I didn't before was female hormones, perimenopause, menopause, and men turning into scared little boys thinking, what have I done wrong and how do I put this right? How can a man take responsibility for female hormones? I mean, I think a lot of men find it difficult to manage our own hormones. Mm. But to be able to speak with other men about not taking it personally and how to be there mm. for the partner, for the children, and for us to learn from each other. And I'd say also, tragically, going back to the social issue, so many men don't have friends. Yes. So many men go to their partners. You be my friend. You be my mummy. You meet the world, you take care of the money, you take care of our social lives, et cetera, et cetera. And it's tragic, the isolation due very often to competition or whatever it is that people, um, you know, social media or people go to the internet for, how can I make myself good enough in order to connect with other people? Mm. So one of the tragedies about men is it's straight in the head and then it's doing something. And that bypasses the heart and being someone. Mm. I just want to bring you back to some statistics that uh, the, this MP, Nick Fletcher, actually mentions here, which I think, think is really pertinent. 75% of those who take their own lives are men. Life expectancy is 3.7 years lower for them than women. 83% of rough sleepers are male. 96% of the prison population are male. You talk about role models here, and I think this is the key, and, and you're also right about men find it really hard to talk. They don't have the role models they have. If you don't have a father figure in your family, you don't really know how you're meant to act. There's also poverty plays a huge role in this as well. We've also yeah. seen uh, young white boys particularly suffering here. Lack of ro role models, uh, poverty of aspiration, not knowing what to do. They turn to violence and crime. And, and that almost is a cry for help, isn't it? 
on one hand. On another hand, I would say a lot of young boys, uh, boys and men need to belong. It's some sort of a strange core need, needing to belong, not, not being on the outside. A lot of neighbourhoods, it's not an option not to be part of a gang. You have to be part of something that's going on, otherwise you're in trouble, your family's in trouble. So there's the belonging aspect. And also to go back to the suicide figures and the homelessness, I have spoken and worked with both. The number of men who have been abused, often sexually abused, mm -hmm. and then go into the addictions in order to survive, mm -hmm. who end up homeless. It's like, I will do anything to get away from society, to get away from the things that have harmed me, and I've got nowhere to go. That's where they come from. And the strange, I've got a very rich client who lives in central London who said to me a, a, quite, a few months ago, I envy the men on the street who I step around to go to my apartment because one thing they have that I don't is they've got each other, mm. they've got a sense of community, and they've got a sense of belonging. Wow. And money can't buy that. Wow. And the number of men who make the money and then they come up with, okay, well, I've got everything crossed off the list, but I still don't have peace or purpose or passion or belonging mm. or satisfaction and my money can't buy this. No. No, it's very, very powerful. So just, just coming full circle on this, how would a minister for men actually help? I think the first step has got to be listening. What exactly is going on? The statistics are all well and good, but my first question always is why? Why are the statistics yeah. here? What is going on with men? Where have we got, gone wrong? What do men need? And surely one of the firm, I mean, Johan Harry said, um, social medicine is the name of the game, whether it's mental health issues, emotional health issues, and going back to suicide, the number of men I've spoken to and worked with who have wanted to take their lives because they've tried everything, they've thought through everything, and the only way to stop the pain is to remove themselves from the situation. They've got nowhere to take their pasts. Their futures are homeless and the present hurts so much mm. that they've got no one to talk with and they don't belong anywhere. There's no one to hold them. So quite simply and logically, they want to remove themselves from the situation. Yeah. So a minister for men has a lot of issues to sit with. And you've named so many of them. I mean, male role models, mm. boys, lost boys. I work in a boarding school and I, and every now and again, and I, I am um, trained boys to hold boys groups in the boarding school because they need to be heard and know how to navigate the pressures that yeah. they have. And one thing that shocked me about these boys and they, they're in the mid to late teens is they've all they already are feeling like they've missed the boat they want to contribute to society and the pressures on them it's like oh my god how do i do mm. this this hurts too much i need to please the parents my the pressures on me and they're on on the edge as well it's mm. like at every level there are so many people with pressure to perform on the edge and it and, and it no is that listening. it is that right it is it's the pressure to perform and as you rightly say no one is listening kenny really good to talk to you thank you very much thank indeed you. that's kenny mamarella de cruz who is a men's issues commentator it's a really complex issue that as well oh we could have had more time with that there i know, had so I know, many questions i know, I know. so so many